is David Patrick Fitzstock Charts Market Video Update for January 2nd, 2019. We are in no trend. We had a huge monster year in 2018. We had 11 uptrends. We normally get two to three good uptrends in a year. We hit it out of the park last year. Will that happen again? Probably not for a while. Now, we've had huge years since 2013 launch. Last year, by far the best. Over 200 in different, different stock option entries that have doubled our money. That's very hard to find in this uh, industry. So currently we're on no trend. We'll look at the charts with that. We'll look at the five minute rules of engagement for today. We'll look at the 2008 historical chart pattern comparison. And I allocated some money into fixed income. Wow, that sounds boring. Well, it's boring because we just came out of a downtrend. We're in an uptrend and I need some yield of my money. And we'll talk about that in a moment. So let's get into first. I changed a couple things on the website and you can see you can scroll through the categories. But when we got our 90% club, let's scroll down there and grab it. I'll click on the link. There we go. 201 different options doubled last year. 63 triplers, 263 triplers since we launched the service. 955 doublers since 2013. That is using a simple methodology of rules of engagement and concentrating on price structure and trend. This will continue to grow into 2019 and beyond. And we're going to be all on top of these new trades. Okay, so we, that's not the trade I want. Let's see if uh, I can pull that back up. We want to talk about a couple things here. We're going to look at this historical chart pattern comparison to 2008. Um, real fast in reference to yields. If you go back to when I launched the service, I had I think 20% of my investments allocated to bonds, which actually at that point in time was zero coupon strips, which is United States Treasury zero coupon bonds. And that was nice income. I think I was getting, I want to say close to 4% or high threes. And I was comfortable having that allocation in my investments in my retirement account. And it was more or less, I wanted some yield on my money and I wanted to hedge some equities if the market went back down. And it ended up, it ended up being a huge investment and trade. I think I made over 20% of my money on those zero coupons. Now, I don't anticipate to get that kind of performance with what I did today, but I posted on Twitter, I allocated 10% of my investments slash retirement accounts um, into, J uh, you can do it with different, you can go Bank of America, you can go Citigroup, you can go Allstate, what, whatever company you're comfortable with. I'm very comfortable with J.P. Morgan. I feel like it's, even though it's not AAA, I feel it's almost as safe as U.S. Treasury, that's my personal opinion. You always have to define risk no matter if it's a trade or investment. Um, anyway, 6.125 current yield, uh, actually the coupon, and you know you have to take into consideration yield to call, yield to worse, and things like that. And we'll go over that this year, uh, talk a little bit more about fixed income. But that's not what the service is about. You know the service is about trading. So let's get into that. Dow Jones on the left, Dow Jones on the right, 2008 on the left. Let's magnify this a little bit. And it's possible, I mean, we never try to predict, it's possible that we might have seen a short-term low in the market. And this is what we're looking at. If we could see this MACD bull cross and we can get uh, over, let's see, Wednesday, Monday, would be Friday's highs. If we can get over Friday's highs, yeah, we could have an uptrend. Now, it's probably going to be short-lived. We talked about this, that all uptrends are not created equal. Uptrends below the 50 and 200 SMA are not bullish and they're, not sh and they're very short-lived. And we have to be prepared for that. So I have highlighted here where we could go if we do go on an uptrend, which we talked about before. Um, well, this is the Dow Jones. We'll look at the SP shortly. But it was slightly above the 38.2% FIB in between. That's where we got back in 2008. And if we're still using that analog, we're going to go with that. Now let's flip to the SPX. Um, let's see here. And I believe I have those up. Let's magnify this. All right, well, we never pick lows. We always talk about that. And we'll talk about these rules of engagement in a moment. We need price back above this red candle's high. That's what I want to see. Now, we did close into no trend out of a downtrend a couple days ago, right here. That was the first close above the green line, which is a 10 simple moving average. So we went into no trend. We were in a sustained downtrend. We went into no trend. Now we could go back into a downtrend. 
or we would go on an uptrend. We'd have to get above this candle since this candle was the first print close above the 10 SMA. We have to get above that candle's high. That candle's high is 2509. Above 2509, you know, then we'd start talking about bogeys in the daily. You know, above this 38 point, we talked about 2600. 2575 to 2600 would be my upside bogey if we go on an uptrend. It's a big if. We're not there yet and we're not going to predict that. Let's scroll to this ES because it's a new year and we got paid. No, I don't want to say we because it's not everyone. And I don't want this ever to be the focus. I don't want my trades to be the focus. And I don't want the ES five minute rules of engagements to be our tr focus. But when we're in a downtrend or a no trend, and you want to participate, it's the best way, it's the safest way, as crazy as it sounds, the safest way is to use our rules of engagement, price above the green 10 SMA with MAGD or vice versa if you're short. So coming into today, uh, we have Globex session in here. Okay, so here we go. Once again, it's easy to, to highlight this in hindsight and be a Monday morning quarterback, but this we look for simple uptrend and downtrend lines. So you broke it there. We got above this green, so you had rules to engage here. You went into an uptrend there as your second close above the 10 SMA, right? So back, you know, in Globex last night, 2461, you're long. Your stop, very simple as the low of the day like it always is. Now, if you don't trade overnight session and you came in here and you just draw another simple downtrend line, you could have got long, you know, up here, 2466. We didn't go on an uptrend until there. Well, if we sort of got stuck, you lost, you didn't lose, but you took a little bit of heat, but your stop would have been earliest here or maybe Globex is low, right? So you don't get stopped in that trade. You really take very little heat at all, and you go into a nice uptrend that pays. And you have price strength confirmation to add, and we're scaling. We're scaling up here because we don't know. Are we going to see sustained... Uh, move up or is it going to go right back down like it's been doing right so the new highs of the day came here that was with macd that's a bullish sign but then we created a lower high macd bear crossed and yeah you have rules to engage if you're a bear short right you could have been short here because you had your rules to engage below the green tennis ma obviously your stop would be the high of the day the opposite right so it looks like all three trades of those worked very nicely. If you'd been short there, you only made a couple handles. I usually scale quick, plus three, then plus five, plus seven, plus 10. And then I hold on to you know a 10% runner where I am, still have a runner over here. Um, let's see if I can drag. Yeah, see, this is the JP Morgan preferred. God, I hope I don't drive this up because these things are not liquid, by the way. They, they trade, if you go to a level two quote, they trade with, you know, 10 cent bid ask sometimes, and it's hard to get out of a lot of shares. Let me just tell you that right now. So do not trade these. These are for investments. But, you know, if you look at this, if I'm able to get, and this got down to par, I almost wish I would have, I waited till the first day of the year, wish I would have got in down here. You saw a bottoming, and this is a preferred. We don't trade it, but you saw a WV bottom, and you break up a downtrend line, and, you know, it's, it's, it's a decent yield on your money. You go to a weekly, that, let's see here. It's not really telling you too much on the weekly. It's already in between all sorts of prices. So you're, if you're going to, when I say take these for a trade, you're probably looking, you know, six months out, nine months out. You're not looking for a day trade, obviously. But if you're going to trade an investment idea, you probably want to look at the bonds or TLT. And the bonds remain bullish. We talked about this bottoming process, WV bottom. They remain bullish. And when you look at TLT, it's on the ESFL if you see price strength confirmation. So if you're looking for a trade, if you're going to take bond futures, you're going to take TLT. Or you could take TLT calls. I'm parking some money in for an investment because I think it's a good investment and I think it's a good trade. So I, that's why that's what I did with JP Morgan. Once again, you can do it with any preferred. You could do it with, it doesn't have to be a bank or an insurance company. It, there's a lot of, Dominion has a preferred. There's utility preferreds. There's... Um, all sorts of different companies um, that you can do preferreds, so and we'll talk more about that. I don't want to spend too much, money, uh, too much time on that right now. So let's fly through what's going on with the market. So we are in no trend, which our number one priority in no trend is what? Preservation of capital in do and downtrends and no trends. So if we look at the highest time frame, let's get rid of the fibs here. And by the way, 
I'm going to try to get this audio perfected on these videos. I don't know how it's going to turn out today. I have a microphone, and I was getting an echo in my, mo uh, my office, so I switched to a headset. And I noticed I could hear the wires ruffling around real loud. So I'm going to find perfection here shortly, uh, and bear with me. So this is a weekly, and you have to respect 200 SMAs on higher time frames. As you go back in history, it's been, what, back in 2011, last time we broke that 200 SMA. So that is major support. Never a reason too long unless you have rules to engage me. Now, above the green 10 SMA is rules to engage long. We're way, we've been in a downtrend on the higher time frame for, what, 10 weeks, let's just call it. So that remains bearish, MACD at new low. So the higher time frame does not look good, which would coincide with what I was saying. Even if we're lucky to see a rally to 2,600, I think, you know, I think according to what the technicals say, we're going to roll back over and at least recheck these lows. So that's why we have to keep an open mind and not have high expectation when price, this is price, is below a 50 SMA that's going lower and a 200 SMA that's going lower after a death cross, which is the 50 through the 200. All right, let's fly through the charts because we've got a lot to talk about. NASDAQ 100, you know, it's the same thing. A lot of these indexes are looking almost identical. IYT, IWM, yeah, there's not much difference in them. So I don't think we have a lot of relative strength or relative weakness right now with these individual ETFs. Now, this is very interesting on oil. Oil right now, well, we'll look at oil futures in a moment, but that actually, that's a Bullish, bullish candle, which is suggesting a short squeeze could come all the way to 62 on that. And when we look at the futures, yeah, I mean, well, I don't know why we can't get back up to $50. And that's a big, big movement off the lows, right? That's eight. That's almost what's got to be 18% or something like that. So oil futures have improved. XLE has improved. All the indexes have improved. Let's look at gold. Gold, I mean, we talked about the uh, WV bottoming process, and this has been a phenomenal investment idea. We had silver engage long today. and Don't expect these to be day trades, especially when we're in no trend. This might take some time, but I think it could get to 15 and a half or at least 15 bucks, but you got to give it some time. Um, we looked at TLT. I don't want to, uh, so let's go into the markets here. Here's the Apple. Now, we know when we launched the service, Let's scroll back so we can all see here. Back in 2013. I was one of the few Apple bears, and it's not because of the products, the revenue growth, or really anything. It's because of the technicals, right? It's real simple. A Apple follows technicals. It, it follows it best almost. When we broke an uptrend line here, it was real simple. That was no longer a bullish trade. When you go back in uh, 2013, right? There's 11, 12, yeah. Same thing. When we broke back in 2013, we broke that. This is big trouble, right? It came down and held the 200 SMA support. So, yeah, I do think there's support down here, 140 to 150. I think there's big support. But it is also catching a falling knife when you have MACD at the lowest level it's been in, I think, maybe a decade. So there's going to be trades. There's going to be day trades. There's going to be, you know, swing long trades. But the bottom line is, is Apple's going to set up long sooner or later. It might take even months. But when it does, your patience is going to pay with this one. Because look, at, if you waited for a break of a downtrend on a weekly, right? Now there you might have got trapped, but you get a double bottom there, then your V, and you had MACD bull cross. This is huge. It's huge opportunity. And like I talked about last year, I think there's going to be huge opportunity long, even in a bear market, with Apple and Facebook and a few of these others. So let's change our time frame here. What do we have? Well, we need Apple has to get above 159.36. If it does, yeah, I think it squeezes the 165 area. Right? But we have to wait to see if that's going to happen. We can't predict it. Amazon, nice reversal. That is a bull flag above a break of a downtrend after bullish divergence. New lows came on price without MACD. So this is a nice setup for a short squeeze higher. Netflix, same thing. New lows came without MACD. So we have some leaderships there. Facebook, new lows came without MACD. We have some nice stocks that are setting up. I just want the expectations to be reasonable. When we're in an uptrend and when the price is above the 10 SMA, the 50 SMA, and the 200 SMA, we're breaking the new highs. That's how the stars aligned. 
to understand that we are the higher time frame is always, always, always in charge. So you have to have a reasonable expectations when we do finally see these stocks start to lead again, they're most likely going to be contained within a couple weeks. And most likely, we could go right back down. We are not going to expect that. Once we get long, we're going to put our stops in. We're going to ride them infinitely like we always do. Tesla showing some weakness. Roku. I'm going to fly through a bunch of these until I see anything that outstanding. NVIDIA had a nice reversal today. New lows came without MACD. So, I mean, look at some leadership. Netflix, Amazon, Apple, uh, Facebook. Um, did we look at Google? Google, eh, not so much. But those other four look pretty good. Intel, Texas Instruments, some dinosaurs. They look like they're sleeping pretty much. Abgo, yeah, not too much. LITE, that's an interesting chart. You got a W, break of a downtrend line, double bottom. Um, we'll wait till the V develops. But let's go to Baba, uh, not doing too much. And Baidu, man, they're really not leading. Workday, Jobs, uh, CRM, yeah, don't see a ton of lead leadership there. WB, Ruba, NTES, yeah. I don't see too much going on there. GoDaddy, PayPal, Visa, MasterCard. They look contained. Uh, Twitter, Snap. I would say so far we looked at Amazon. Apple looked good. Netflix looked good. Facebook looks good. And NVIDIA. Those five, if we do go into an uptrend, by the way, we're right on the day we're down eight handles, so we're not even remotely close to an uptrend. But if we do, that's the kind of leadership we want to see if it happens. But once again, we're red on the day, we're red on the year. We have to wait for higher prices to get long. So that way we would have our rules of engagement. Some bank stocks. Now these new lows in JP Morgan were confirmed with MACD. So I do think this will be a, a, a bull trap up here. It could pay, but I think this is gonna roll right back over. It doesn't matter what I think, only matters what price says. But be careful with your upside projection on some of these banks. They do look like a bottoming process is happening uh, but once again the expectations you have for these Goldman Sachs that could squeeze pretty big 185 area that's that's a nice payday CME was a huge leader last year let's see if it can lead again ice uh, CBOE we talked about this one could be a nice opportunity for 2019 with the bottoming process happened here well guess what that's all negated you had new lows new lows came with MACD basically at nine month lows you got to be very careful. And I tell you what, you can't get re-swing long probably till back above 115. Now, this one could set up for a trade. It's just not showing any leadership right now. Uh, let's flip to the energy. COP, nice reversal. CVX, uh, if I can type her in correctly. Very, very bullish candles on some of these. But it's very early in the day. It's 12, it's 1230 Eastern. And we got, you know, got some time to trade. And we could still close at the lows. That's why it's very important to wait, to wait, let me just switch here. What are we waiting for? We obviously know what we're waiting for. We have to close above that high. That's 2509. You can't go into an uptrend until we're above 2509. So we do not know which way this market's going, and it can easily go right back down here since we're in no trend. So don't guess. Like I said, I am 90% cash. That was from 110% long uh, back in November 2016 when I posted I was long TQQQ, SPXL, UDAO, JP Morgan, Win. I was long, you know, huge. And that was where November 16, right in here, right there. That was when all the stars were aligned. I went cash up here, breaking 2900, an uptrend line. So some of the people that are new to the service, you know, just simple trend lines we draw, right? You break that trend line and back and you went above this trend line in 2016 and we have price above the 10 SMA price below the 10 SMA MACD heading north MACD heading south that gives you an indication of what you want to do with your larger investments swing long uh, retirement accounts at least that's the way I manage my money okay so let's finish up this video update here and see what else is out there uh, anything in biotech land Amgen looks like it's sleeping sell gene it's a pretty nice move. New lows came without MACD, bullish divergence, break of the downtrend. I mean, I think we're at least getting 70 bucks on Celgene. Looks decent. Uh, let's fly through the rest. 
well, ISRG, aluminum, ARGN, Artex. I think, yeah, let me see, is Guildbrook okay? Guild looks decent for a short squeeze too. I think Celgene actually looks the most ripe to see a, a large short squeeze. So we had five tech names that look decent. One biotech, um, what do the casinos look like? It's a nice double bottom on win. You know, let's get rid of all this stuff on the chart, see what we can squeeze to on this one. There's really no resistance until up here. This is a nice looking double bottom. New lows came without MACD, above a downtrend line. I just see no reason why this can't go back to 120. That looks like, you know, probably our seventh. Oh, wow. LVES. Both, all the casinos. Uh, a couple select biotechs, um, and we talked about some of the high flyers with Apple, Amazon, Facebook, Netflix, and NVIDIA. So we got about nine stocks that are showing relative strength. Respect what the market's telling us. What is the market telling us? It's telling us to preserve capital, right? It's telling us that we make our money. Let's clear out things here. We make our money in uptrends. And going back last year, from the left, if you can see, that's an uptrend, right? That's an uptrend. This is an uptrend. And we'll go over these as they happen, but we are not in one of these uptrends yet. And when we get in them, that's when we put our capital, oops, I'm getting a hard time drawing, to work. So we had a bunch of these. Then we went into some downtrends, and this is when we preserve capital. We had a little baby uptrend here, a uh, little baby uptrend there. And like we said, if we do go into one, which we are showing no signs of as of 1230 Eastern, most likely it's going to be contained. 2575 to 2600 to me, most likely there's a 60, 40 odds that it's going to fail there. If it doesn't fail and we both like above, then we'll talk about it and we'll regroup. We'll look at other historical chart pattern comparisons, different analogs to follow. Right now, we're looking at Panic in 1907, the 2008 analogs, which are both bearish. We looked at 1954, which was also bearish, right? If we pull flag above the 50 SMA and start to see price strength confirmation, we're going to look at more bullish setups. But for right now, respect the tape. We're in no trend. If you're taking trades, hopefully it's off the ESFL. Hopefully it's using five-minute rules of engagement. And hopefully you are still preserving your massive gains from last year and preserving your capital and you're being patient and waiting, waiting for those prices that we talked about earlier in the video. That's it for the market video update. Have a great day.